Hello, party people, and welcome to a mock DBA job interview. We are going to be pretending like you are a job candidate, and I am interviewing you, asking you a few questions. And the source for these questions is my DBA uh, Q&A interview kit. Uh, that you can go buy from brentozar.com. If you click on training at the top of brentozar.com, there is a bunch of different training classes. One of them is for DBA job interviews. And it's not just for candidates, it's also for managers who need to hire a DBA. I know a lot of times when we Google for DBA job interview questions, we can get some really crappy questions that are like trivial pursuit based. I don't want to give people trivial pursuit stumpers. I want to give people questions that really gauge whether or not they were uh, working in the industry. So let's start with our first question. The first question that I might, that I might ask, regardless of the type of SQL Server job uh, DBA you are, first question I might ask is, what's the minimum number of files in a SQL Server database. If you go create a SQL Server database, what's the absolute minimum number of files that you're going to see involved with that database? I'm gonna move my chat window around a little bit here so that I can see it over on my desktop because I'm streaming this live on TikTok and we'll see if some of the folks try to answer it as well. What is the minimum number of files that I'm gonna have in a SQL Server database? The minimum number of files is going to be two. I need at least two files. And when someone answers that, assuming that they answer it correctly, I'd want to follow up with, what are the two kinds of files then? What are the two kinds of files that any SQL Server database is going to have? What I'm expecting to hear is data file and a log file. Every SQL Server database is going to have at least one data file and one log file. Now, there may be others you may create, for example, in memory OLTP. You may figure uh, some other uh, kinds of files, uh, column store indexes. You might try to put them in a separate file group or some other fancy stuff like that. Oh, DBA uh, you know, over in TikTok chat says, your work made me a senior DBA. Good. Let's see if we can keep going with getting you a better job as well. Not saying that your current job sucks by any means. Uh, next up, I might ask, what is the tempdb database used for in SQL Server? I'm not asking for a list of everything that the tempdb database is being used for, but give me some examples of what the tempdb database might be used for or Another thing that you might talk about is when the TempDB database has grown or filled up, what have been some of the causes for that? Let's see what you come up with. So one of the ways, that, one of the things you're probably going to come up with right away is temp tables. When users create temp tables, that's going to be a problem. But I say it's going to be a problem. I mean, people do it all the time. It just is what it is. Other examples of things are triggers. The virtual tables and triggers have before and after tables. Uh, Read-only uh, databases have statistics that are maintained over in TempDB. Sometimes when people do a uh, rebuild of indexes, they use the sort in TempDB option. I'm not looking for specific, uh, uh, you know, a specific laundry list of exactly some things, but the more that people elaborate, the more confident I can be that they've actually been a production database administrator. Because, of course, if you've been a production database administrator, you've dealt with problems with TempDB running out of space, filling up, etc. Now, uh, Random Guid says over in TikTok chat, it's used for storing temporary data in TempDB. Also, it can be configured and moved to another drive location. One of the things that I like when people give those kinds of answers is that I can follow up and say, okay, why might you move it to another location? What would be uh, reasons that you've had in the past where you had to move it from one place to another? Whenever you're interviewing a database administrator, you want to uh, use the improv technique. I love this. This book is absolutely fantastic. 
This isn't about database administration. This is actually about improv comedy, improv improvisational comedy. I'm not saying that your interviews necessarily have to be funny. But one of the big fundamentals of improv comedy is to say yes and. You never, if someone comes in an improv comedy and they say, hi, I've got a package here for you. You never say, I didn't order a package. You say, oh, great, what's inside? You say, yes, and, and you run with it. Well, it's the same thing with job interviews. When someone gives you part of an answer, you want to run with it. For example, because Random Goods said, just put it on, or consider putting it on another drive, I might ask, so why would you put it on another drive? And Random Good over in the TikTok chat continues, each disk can have an I.O. limit, if you put it on the same drive as the, your regular databases, you can hit those limits. That's absolutely true, especially that tells me that Random Good might have been working in the cloud because AWS, Google, Microsoft, all of those have per drive limitations. And that's great. That helps me go yes and and tell me more about those uh, so that I can dig deeper into their experience. Because at the end of the day, I'm not necessarily looking when I do DBA job interviews, I'm not necessarily looking to get a specific set of answers. I just want to drill down and figure out that this person isn't BSing me. Uh, DBA uh, is lisp is is lisp is DBA is lape uh, says over in TikTok chat. The best DBA interview I had was just a conversation of experiences and what I love about being a DBA. I would also add on that uh, like what are the last couple few problems you've solved? You know, tell me about outages that you've suffered with. And I never want to make anybody give away what their, you know, like specific information about the company that they work for. Uh, but having them talk about the kinds of outages that they've solved or challenges that they've solved helps a lot uh, to open those conversations. All right, let's go for another question. How is the model database used in SQL Server? So now we're starting to get into questions that not everyone's going to have the answer to. And, and part of that for me is finding out the edge of where someone says, I don't know. I want, when I'm dealing with DBAs, I want to make sure that I don't have somebody who's just BSing me, someone who's just flat out making things up. Because if they're going to make things up during the interview, then they're going to make things up when I'm trying to deal with a production outage, when I'm trying to deal with uh, why is a piece of code slow. So the question, what, what is the model database used for? Most database administrators never have to know this. If you do have to know this, it's kind of an unusual uh, DBA job that you've had. What the model database is used for is whenever you go create a brand new database, if you say create database in SQL Server, SQL Server starts with the contents of whatever's in the model database and uses that as a template. So if you had an object that you wanted to make sure was ever in every brand new database that you created, you could put it in model and then you'll make sure that you'll automatically inherit those in every new database that you create. Now, I don't need to hear that from my DBA job candidates because I can count on one hand the number of times that I've ever had to use that piece of knowledge. And I've been working with SQL Server for more than 25 years. But I want to gradually push folks until I hear the words, I don't know. And if they never say, I don't know, then it makes me nervous about how they're going to react in production because they're going to bluff their way through things, giving me fake answers when I, I really just want them to admit. All right, next up, what tools do you like to use for index and statistics maintenance? If you're a d database administrator, it doesn't really matter whether you're a production database administrator or a development database administrator, you work with data warehouses, Postgres, SQL Server, anything like that. No matter what kind of database you use, you're going to have some kind of maintenance that you need to do. Over in uh, TikTok Live Games asks, do you have a favorite question that's database agnostic? This is certainly one of those. So over in TikTok chat, uh, Benjamin says, Ola Hollengren for the win. Ola, Ola Hollengren is probably the uh, most popular third-party index maintenance, index and stats maintenance tool that's out there. And when someone says that, especially if they spell Ola Hollengren correctly, 
that gives me some confidence that they've done some production administration work. And I might ask them, I might follow up and ask them, uh, what are the pros and cons of that? Why did you choose that? Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to hear their thought process behind it. Another answer that people might say is uh, maintenance plans. Maintenance plans are built into SQL Server. And for some of you out there who are very senior, you're going to get a knee-jerk reaction as soon as you hear the term maintenance plans. You're going to say things like, oh, maintenance plans are really limited. But if a DBA job candidate tells you maintenance plans, that's okay. What you want to drill down in is ask, okay, so did you have any problems with maintenance plans? Were there anything that, was there anything that you bumped into uh, that caused you issues? And you got to make sure not to prejudice your, uh, your body language or tone. You want to be helpful and curious the whole time that you do that. A lot of the world actually does use maintenance plans and it works just fine for their needs or they're not allowed to use any third-party scripts in their environment. I've worked with some companies where all they're allowed to do is either use things that are built into the product or write their own scripts from scratch. If you're gonna write your own scripts from scratch for index and stats maintenance, that's probably going to be a problem in the year 2024. For a lot of servers, in, uh, uh, the built-in maintenance plans are okay, and that just tells me the kind of database administrator uh, that their that their the job that they had in the past. It also gives me some idea of blind spots that they may have. Uh, DBA's laypersons or lay P says over in TikTok chat blitz as an answer. Well, that's kind of a bad news there. So that tells me somebody's bluffing. Blitz doesn't have, Blitz is part of the uh, first responder kit, doesn't have any index maintenance or statistics maintenance capabilities whatsoever. But even when someone gets a question wrong, that's also useful as well because you can ask them, oh, tell me more about how you use the Blitz scripts for index maintenance and statistics maintenance. What were the, the commands that you use or what were the advantages of that for index and statistics maintenance that you found? Sometimes they, they might go, oh, as they're talking, they might go, oh, wait, I recommend it's that. I realize that it's actually something else. Or they just keep digging themselves a bigger and bigger hole, and you know that they're bluffing and they're faking it. Certainly a lot of people are in those kinds of things. And Benjamin says, oh, cr uh, crud, I missed an L when I spelled Hollingren. That's okay. Most people, most people can't spell Ola Hollingren correctly. I see hilarious Google searches for that on my own blog. Um, uh, and a lot of people don't know that Ola a guy. Ola is a guy out of Sweden or Norway. I've had the pleasure of seeing him speak. Really friendly. Uh, Random Good asks, do you know of any database consulting companies that are hiring? Basically, all of them are hiring all the time. Now, not me because I'm not building a database consulting company anymore, uh, but almost every database consulting firm that you can see out there is always hiring. It's just a matter of they want to find the right person at the right rate with the right experience. So if you're looking for a consulting engage or a consulting job, by all means, take your resume, email it to any database consulting companies that you know about, and just say, hey, I'm considering uh, leaving and going towards a full-time consulting role. Is, is my experience the kind of thing that you might be interested in? Because often they don't even post these kinds of jobs. Uh, uh, also, the best time to look is when you're fully employed, if that makes sense. Uh, if you're fully employed by a company then and you have the active current experience, uh, that's valuable to them uh, because they want to get people with real world experience. Not that you can't find a job after you've been laid off, but it's just easier. It's also easier to have those kinds of salary discussions when you're already fully employed and it keeps you sharp with interviewing. So I have tons of questions like this, and I do this in this exact video format in my DBA interview training class. And this weekend, I'm giving it away completely for free. If you go to the link in my bio over at brentozar.com, under my training classes, there's a DBA interview Q&A class, and I'm giving it away totally free. Just use the coupon code TikTok. It's only for this weekend, and of course that's spelled the same as TikTok, the app, T-I-K-T-O, 
T-I-K-T-O-K. Uh, and you can get it absolutely for free. So you can go pick that up. There's over an hour's worth of interview questions and they go just like this where I give you the question, I wait a second, and then I tell you what I was looking for in your answer. It's good for both managers and for uh, DBAs who are in the market. So go hit the link in my bio this weekend only and enjoy. Now I'm going to go back to work because I have my own work to do, but I want to have a little bit of fun with this. Um, Ma says, I'm a developer at a state government, master's in computer science, should I take your class? I have all kinds of classes. They are focused on database administrators, though. If you're either already a full-time database administrator or if you want to become a database administrator, specifically in Microsoft SQL Server, if you're not hands-on working with Microsoft SQL Server, then it's not a good fit. Uh, Phil says, Brent, I've inherited an Azure SQL DB recently and I need to assess its health. What are the first steps? That's a great question. Google for Brent Ozar health check. And I have a totally free set of scripts that you can use called the First Responder Kit. And I walk you through doing a health check on your database. So it's I've got a big series of blog posts out there. Google for Brentos our health check. And then uh, that'll walk you through doing a health check and a performance check. And anytime that I use the term SQL Server, it kind of is in, interchangeable with Azure SQL DB and I talk about in those posts. All right, thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will see y'all on the next live stream. Adios.